Hello guys and welcome back to my channel where I mainly review budget oriented gear So today we are going to look at keyboard switches Specifically budget oriented tactile switches So if you are looking to build your first custom budget mechanical keyboard You are mainly looking for keyboard switches and maybe you are looking for something that is um, more affordable So these are the two switches that I think are the prime example of good budget switches so the one on the left is the Echo CS Blue retailing for around 45 ringgit for 45 switches while the other one is the Feco Holy Panda which retails for around 50 ringgit for 35 switches. Now the first switch that we're going to look at is the, actually the Feco Holy Panda. This is actually a clone of the very popular uh, Drop Inverb Holy Panda or also another clone of the Glorious Holy Pandas. This uh, switch is highly regarded as having good, very good tactility and a very pronounced tactile bump. It's also a relatively heavy switch uh, with the springs of around 67 grams. Now looking at the packaging, it's actually quite standard. It comes in a box, inside the box, there's the switches located inside the bag. But although compared to the Echo, as we'll see later, this kind of packaging does pose some kind of problems. Now the main issue that this kind of packaging causes is actually bend pins on the keyboard switch itself. So you need to make sure that you straighten out the pins before you installing on your PCB or it can cause damage to the switch or even worse, the PCB itself. Especially if it's a heel style hot swap socket. Now look at the exterior of the switch. It's actually more of an off-white switch than a cream color and the stem has a very light pinkish cream color. Uh, the switches also use the standard um, get around style housing, get around or Cherry MX style housing, and the bottom is only a uh, three pin instead of five pin. So if you are looking to, you know, mount the switch plateless, I don't think that's a very good idea because that is generally suitable for you know five pin switches. Now a second contender today is actually the Echo Ocean Blue. This is a, a tactile switch but it's relatively lighter at only 55 gram. The tactile bump is also not as pronounced as the Feco Holy Panda. Uh, however, the unique feature is that this spring actually has a progressive type of spring. Now before we go further, I need to give props to Echo because even for a budget brand, they managed to give us superb packaging for the switches. None of my 45 switch that came in had band pins or any type of deformity because the packaging is super proper. And I'm surprised that more expensive switches doesn't use this kind of packaging considering their price. And even better, the packaging can be used as a lubing station. So if you don't have a lubing station like me, you can even save money and just use the packaging. Now looking at the switch itself, it comes in generally a blue color with a blue bottom housing, transparent top housing and a blue stem. Now keep in mind that the housing also has a slight blue tint so your RGB color will be distorted to a bluish hue. The switch also uses the Kales type housing instead of the st more standard Chevy MX style housing. And the switch similar to previously also uses a 3 pin style so going plateless is not really an option. The switch is also a relatively smooth stock. Now how does the switches feel? Compared to the standard MX Brown, definitely both the Echo and the Faker has a more pronounced tactile bump. Both are also relatively smooth stock but will benefit from lubing. However, well, if you are talking about the tactile bump, the tactile bump of the Echo CS Blue is actually closer towards the MX Brown compared to the Faker Holy Panda which has a lot of uh, pronounced tactility uh, of the tactile bump. I'm not saying that the Echo CS Blue uh, tactility is, you know, like the MX Brown. No, I'm just telling you that is, I mean, compared to the MX Brown, it feels like a bit more pronounced. But the Feco Holy Panda tactile bump is significantly more pronounced. I mean, this is compared to MX Browns. Now, on to the sound test.
need some free time. What do I think about the sutures? Um, I would say first, first let me preface that um, if you buy an either of these features, there is no problem. Both are extremely good value and provide something new to the market, especially if you're an, a beginner like me, just going into the mechanical keyboard scene and not really looking to spend a lot of money. I think both uh, provide uh, excellent value, so you cannot go either wrong with either one. However. Objectively speaking, the Echo CS Blue is obviously better value because it costs slightly cheaper or more or less the same but each pack comes with a 45 uh, switch as opposed to the Panda which only comes with a 35 uh, switch per pack. So what this means is that if you're looking to build something like a 75% keyboard or you're looking to build a TKL keyboard, then uh, you would have uh, you only need to buy the Echo CS Blue of two packs instead of three. So that's, that is an advantage, but if you're looking to, to deck out like a 65% or 68% keyboard, there's really no difference. Uh, both will need two packs. Now in terms of feel, let me just clarify something that in the keyboard world, there is a lot of things that is down to preference. So keep that in mind. What I like might not be the same to what you prefer. But I will try to summarize and I will say that for me, for my users, I like the Echo CS Blue more. Because number one is um, because it's the, actually the lighter tactile screen. That is mainly the reason. And I don't really like a huge tactile bump. Uh, the reason is because um, I'm mainly a gamer and I really dislike having heavy switch when I'm gaming. So I prefer a lighter switch. So I prefer the Echo CS with the 55 gram springs as opposed to the Panda 67 um, gram strings so and it does feel heavier the string is heavier and then the tactile bump is more pronounced so every time you need to push a switch you can feel that you require a bit more effort compared to the Echo CS Blue but if you're a typist or maybe you like the tactility maybe you like the typing feel uh, I know a lot of typists prefer um, the heavier tactile bump so maybe you should go with the Fekka Panda. Uh, I will also say that if you're used to like an MX Brown and you want something like you want a tactile switch that is significantly more different than your current MX Brown, get the Fekka Panda because it's totally different from the MX Brown. The Echo CS Blue feels something like a, a smoother and more slightly more tactile brown switch if that makes sense. Now another benefit of getting the Echo CS Blue is that if you're a beginner like me and you don't have a lubing station, as you can see, the packaging you can use as a lubing station. So a uh, lubing station will generally sell you back around ten dollars or around thirty ringgit Malaysia um, in Shopee. But instead of spending that, you can just use the packaging and use it as a lubing station, which actually works great for me, especially if you want to just loop the bottom housing. And also, I have to give credit to Echo because uh, for me, uh, they are really upping the bar for budget switches with the packaging and the features and you know, there's a lot of Echo CS line right now. You can get the, I think the pink switch and then there's, there's the matcha green and then there's like, okay, I cannot remember, I just put it up on screen right now. So, there's a whole bunch of Echo line of switches and they are really catering to the budget market. And I also like that Echo is doing something original. Uh, whereas the faker is actually, well, it's basically a fake holy vendor style of switch. So, uh, I will give Echo a bonus point for all of that. Anyway guys, we have reached the end of the video. Do the usual YouTube stuff. Help support me by leaving a like and subscribing my video. Especially if you're interested in budget oriented um, like PC gaming peripherals, things like that, PC hardware, things like that. If that are uh, uh, all the stuff that interests you, do consider to leave me a subscribe and help a fellow Southeast Asian YouTuber out. Um, I guess uh, see you guys next time. Ciao!